good afternoon <laughs> and it is a beautiful afternoon god how i love this weather but it will soon be september hard to believe and i was just checking on my fig trees by the way i failed to mention this is a smith that I planted in 7B. It's an experimental attempt to get this variety to grow here. And I think I might be able to get it to survive. We'll see. The general word on smith is that it's not very cold hardy. And it won't have any protection. I, I might put a little shield behind it to block some of the wind. Up against the deck but that's about all I'll do I lobbed off the tops of this tree when I planted it a couple weeks ago a few weeks ago it's doing really well it's taking root for a transplant <clears throat> I took the tops of these trees and I planted them in my little garden back in New Jersey, which I intend to make a little video about because they're doing splendidly. Maybe it was a month ago. I don't remember. I lose track of time. I'm not one to watch, a, wear a watch or watch, watch the time. Um, and it runs away from me. And that's okay. It's intentional. I don't live my life by a clock. But anyway, never did. But anyway... Um, they're doing really well, these two cuttings that I took. They were hard wood. The top was green, but it doesn't matter. I put them in the ground and they're growing quite nicely. And I want to show, the, show you a video of that. It's a technique that I use. It's a simple technique. It's not mine. <laughs> Some call it the old man, the old Italian man technique. Whatever you want to call it, it works. And I do it all the time. But Today's video is about another subject. I'm just enjoying the weather here for a moment. So let's just walk over this way. I've got some things out on the ground here to sit on. And here you see an unhealthy fig tree. And of course I can tell it's unhealthy. I planted this tree as a little tree that I grew from a little cutting last spring I believe and it started growing pretty well but then I started seeing it slow down and I suspected that it had a problem I waited patiently then earlier in the spring I dug up some this year I dug up some roots because I suspected that it was root knot nematode that had infected this tree and it is an ugly matter. I brought some spray here just so that I can show you the effects of the root knot nematode. I hope that you can see this because you really need to take a good look at this because root knot nematode affects so many states from California all the way to New Jersey and everything in between. It has a northern range. It can only go so far, but I know they're in Pennsylvania and lower New York, so certainly in Virginia, in Maryland, New Jersey, Delaware, all, all of the, uh, you know, South Carolina, North Carolina, everywhere, Georgia, it is a nuisance, and it is indeed, once your plant is infected, an eventually terminal disease condition. And there's not much that you can do in the long term. Eventually, the tree will succumb to the nematodes. It has been my experience. It's sort of like a death sentence, but it's a... You can drench it in solutions that are available on the commercial market for nematodes. And they, their solutions work pretty good, but they, they don't have a lot of bite to them. Uh, because the regulations on such pesticides... Uh, has been uh, tightened up. Uh, the organophosphates, which were generally very effective against root knot nematode, have been banned now. And those organophosphates were everywhere in our foodstuffs. Uh, grapes were very susceptible. 
two nematodes, so was citrus, peanuts, pineapples, oh, the list goes on, peaches, it just goes on and on, but trust me when I tell you, these poisons are in our food, and they banned it recently, uh, within the last one or two years, and good riddance, because organophosphates, which was a substitute for uh, DDT, which DDT, you remember, I'm sure you've heard that term before, uh, was uh, largely made, uh, a, made, the public was largely made aware about DDT in Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. I remember reading that book when it came off the shelf. It was 1968, I believe. Uh, Silent Spring, still a wonderful read about how the DDT, which didn't break down in the environment, um, was causing a tremendous amount of damage environmentally, especially to birds and to the eagles. It was causing them to lay eggs with very thin shells that would break, and so the little uh, birds would die. You know, they would not hatch, or they would hatch, and they would be unhealthy. Or the shells would crush, the eggs would crush at the... Uh, just by the weight of the eagle laying on top, trying to incubate the egg. Not just eagles, birds all around, everything, the environment. It just had a terrible effect. And so they banned that. And the organophosphates were their replacement. And even though the molecular structure of the organophosphates is slightly altered, they got away with that. But it's still dangerous. And it, it doesn't last in the environment as long that is true it does break down sunlight is one of the things that break it down but sunlight's not one of the things that touches it very often when it gets into the ground sunlight's not going to penetrate the ground and it does break down faster by bacteria action and such but it is not a good substitute i don't know if there are any good substitutes for harsh insecticides i, I don't like insecticides i don't like things that are not organic Sometimes I understand that they must be used, but trust me, they are overused and they are abused and they are everywhere in our food chain and our foodstuffs. America is not as, as vigilant, in, in my estimation, uh, in this country is not as vigilant as some other countries in the world that protect their citizens, I think, uh, more forcefully and consistently against such things. And you wonder why there's so much cancer and cancers on the rise and all types of odd cancers that are on the rise recently. And I, I don't know what it's attributable to, and I'm not going to suggest I do, but I certainly think that these things are suspect. So getting back to the nematodes, uh, there are some commercial, uh, supposedly less economic, uh, environmentally harmful uh, remedies. And so you can seek them out. And you can drench the ground, but I have found that eventually they do still succumb. And so I'm digging this tree out. I'm just removing this tree. That's it. And I will put some kind of a solution in the ground to hopefully deal with these nematodes. And I'll dig as many up as I can and dispose of them. And then I'll let the ground stay farrow, farrow uh, for a, a couple uh, years. And then I might put a plant back in here a fig tree or I might not probably I won't I have enough fig trees but isn't it sad you know that the root knot nematode which is a tiny tiny little worm not microscopic you can see it especially with a some some help with magnification but it's a tiny little worm and there are nematodes everywhere and some of them are harmful and some of them are, are actually helpful there's all different kinds of nematodes thousands but the root knot nematode loves roots and it gets into the plant and it destroys all the capillary roots, the tiny little roots, it eats them first and then it just starts to, you can see it makes, it forms, it forms knots as the plant fights it. See these knots, you can see that, can you see that? I hope this is all in focus and not out of focus while well, I'm talking about all this, but here let's spray these two so you can get a really, really good look. You can dig up a small portion. There's so many roots, believe me, on a fig tree, and they're mostly shallow. These are running pretty deep. Uh, uh, they're not real deep is what I mean. And they'll go a little deeper if they need water, if it's a dry spot, and they'll go a little shallower if it's a wet spot. But 
you should be able to dig up a small portion of the roots without harming your tree. Don't even worry about that. Trust me when I tell you, take a little spade, dig alongside of your tree. If you suspect it's not growing well, it lacks vigor, look for root knot nematodes because they're everywhere. I have them in New Jersey. I have them in Virginia. This is Virginia, 7B. And I can tell when a spot has been infected by the nematodes. It could have been from the original fill dirt when it was loaded in here. Maybe a load had some in there and they hung around and lived off the roots of the plants. Here I have a lot of quack grass because no other grass will grow here. So that's one of my first suspects. When I see that other good grasses that I put in the ground won't grow, the nematodes attack them. And I see that just these weeds like quack grass, this is a horrible grass. I hate this thing. You should know, those of you that know about it, we go into that another day if you ever want to. But quack, we call it quack grass, it's horrible. It just grows across the ground, it has roots, look at this. Roots everywhere and just keeps sprouting up. Well, it's not, it's not susceptible. Well, actually, look at this. This is, a, this is a bit of a, I believe, of a quack grass. I'm not sure, this could be part of the, the, fig, uh, the fig root. This could really be part of the fig root, let's see. Just curious, let me, let me try and dig a little. Now, I know this is quack grass because I can see that. Yeah, it's not. I, I thought I, I explored this before. They're not susceptible at all. If they were, they'd be dead. They're not susceptible to the root knot nematode. And you see, it doesn't have those little knots. And these, and these roots are perfectly healthy for quackweed, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but here, the fig is highly 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 susceptible to root knot nematodes and it is a deadly disease to them condition we might say because it really is caused by an organism it's not not necessarily a disease but figs are susceptible to it now some fig varieties are less susceptible and not more susceptible but they are susceptible but there's quite a difference between some varieties. Some varieties can really withstand the nematodes for a longer period of time. And with the drenches or something like that, maybe you can keep it alive. And it can be a, you know, a, a good tree for a while, but eventually it's going to succumb. So if you have a spot in your yard that has nematodes, you could dig up the roots. Don't be afraid to do it. You'll never hurt the tree. And if you find this ugly, horrible mess if you find this ugliness, and I hate them so much, discard the tree. Yeah, that's my best advice. Uh, unless you really know what how to deal with it. I, 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 and I'm not saying that I do because it, I told you, eventually it's a failure. But you could keep the tree alive a few years and get some fruit. And there's some logic to that because you might say, yeah, well, I'm not going to be able to plant another fig tree in that spot anyway. So let me get as many figs as I can. OK, that makes sense. But I'm <clears throat> but I'm telling you that ultimately. In the final conclusion of this occurrence, uh, the end result will be <clears throat> failure. Failure for your fig tree. So I hope that I've shed a little bit of light. They are living organisms. They are little worms. They are highly destructive to figs. It's a condition that I, de I find detestable and, and actually repugnant. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's, it's revolting. Uh, I can't look at this. It's, it's a horrible. This is happening to my fig tree. And this tr fig tree has to be sacrificed. This cute little fig tree that I grew from a little baby cutting now has met the end of its life because of this condition. So be aware, I wanted, I did talk uh, in Fig Monsters, one of my other videos, I did touch upon the subject, but here I wanted to go into greater detail and show more examples of the root knot nematode. What to look for, it's easy to detect. Many people never detect it. They never suspect that what's going on, what's wrong going on with the top of their tree is really, really has everything to do with what's going on in the soil at the root level. And you won't know unless you dig it up. You will never be able to tell unless you dig up those roots. And you say, I had to dig down. And you will detect the root knot nematode. Okay. 
with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it of some use to you. I hope you never get the occasion of having to suffer from or have your trees suffer from this condition. It's certainly regretful. It's sad. There's, again, there's very little that we can really do except for to detect it and do the things that I mentioned in this video and let the, the spot, uh, let it go fallow for several years and you might then attempt it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they'll come up with a cure that's environmentally friendly for a nematode, root knot nematode. They're drastically, I mean not drastically, they're frantically. They are frantically looking for a substitute now or better substitutes to organophosphates. And uh, organophosphates would not be a good solution for this problem anyway because I don't like the idea that organophosphates are, are systemic in their functionality. And what I mean by that is that organophosphates can be drawn up into the roots. Not all pesticides or insecticides um, are drawn up into the roots. They're not all systemic. So you can have, you can eat the fruit and not necessarily be getting contaminated. But with organophosphates, organophosphates are definitely systemic in nature. Okay, that's their functionality. And because of that, residual organophosphates will end up in your fruit. So organophosphates are never a solution. They never were a solution to nematodes. And as far as I'm concerned, they weren't a, dis a solution for peanuts, for citrus, for pineapples, for bananas, and so many other grapes, so many uh, fruit trees, peach trees. Listen, trust me, I've read up on this subject for decades. Organoph organophosphates are bad. And that's why they've been banned now. And they're systemic. And residual, this residual chemical winds up in our foodstuffs. And unless you buy organic, you're going to be eating these chemicals, ingesting them. And I feel that they're highly suspect. Nothing more really needs to be said on that subject, so I won't say any more. I think all of you out there are logical people that have good common sense, and you can read between the lines. You know, protect yourself. Protect yourself because your government agencies may not necessarily be protecting you. I think you're aware of that. Okay, so with that, a little bit of advice. Good day.